الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه وتسنى بسنتي حتى تقوم الساعة يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send peace and blessings upon our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with his companions and this was something that was often asked of the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that is like, what's the best thing I can do? And you find this question quite often in the engagement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba. Ayu a'mal al-afdal ya Rasulullah. And if we can scoot forward, inshallah, brothers. And the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he he said, in this important instance, "Ayu amal al afdal qala imanu billah." Al qal al imanu billah. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to to believe, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa taala. <coughs> Belief is so important that not only are we commanded to achieve it as believers, as someone who's trying to find faith. But even after belief, we are encouraged to look after it. That's why Surah Al-Fatiha, even though we're already Muslims and we're already guided, alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, we still say, ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Ar-Razi said, you know, you say, ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem, guide us, even though you're already a believer, meaning, yani, thabitni al haq like, keep, keep me strong, like, don't let me waver. We know that Sayyidah Umm Salama radiallahu anha, she said that the supplication that I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa make the most was Allahumma muqalib al-qulub thabbi qalbi ala deenik. O oh Allah, if you're from Sham, yani ma'luba. O oh Allah, the muqallib, the one who turns the hearts, thabbit qalbi ala deenik, like keep my heart firm. In fact, subhanAllah, in the Quran we find something unique. And I heard this from one of our professors, Dr. Abdul Hay Faramawi, Allah Yarhamu, who's a great Mufassir in Egypt. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu, aminu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, believe. So he describes us as believers, inshallah. But then he commands us to believe. So he asks us, like, what do you think that means? Like, you say, oh, you who are eating, eat. Like, I'm already eating. Like, why do I need to eat again? Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, aminu. Like, you who have belief, believe. And he said what it means is, yani, jaddid imanakum. Like, to refresh your faith, and to review your faith, and to be introspective about your relationship with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, "Inna mathal al-imani fi jawfi ahadikum." You know, in this authentic hadith, the example of faith in your hearts are like new clothes that fade over time. فَسَأَلُ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى أَنْ يُجَدِّدْ لَكُمْ إِمَانَكُمْ. And he said, "So you should constantly ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and you jaded imanak to refresh and revive your faith." One of the ways that we can do that is to revisit how we framed the concept of faith in our lives. Perhaps we've had bad experiences related to faith, perhaps through irresponsible leadership, or someone who was maybe overburdening in their 
asking us to adhere to faith or in our own trials and tribulations or shortcomings. But mashallah, in the chapter called Abraham, we find something really, really beautiful, how we should see faith. And when people look at faith in this way, they will not see faith as something which is limiting or something which restricts them. But they will see that the idea of faith in Islam is really about tying ourselves to God and becoming the best we can be. That's why Allah says, Alam tara kayfa darab Allahu mathala. In the 25th verse of Surah Ibrahim, Prophet Abraham, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and it's a rhetorical question, have you not seen how Allah sets forth mathala? The word mathala, it's like translated as a parable, but packed in, in that word is something very powerful. That's lost in translation. Because we call an actor mumathil, like Adil Imam in Egypt. Like he's one of the most famous mumathil. He's a famous actor. But subhanAllah, the reason that the Arabs would call a parable mathala is this is something alayka and tumathilu. Like this is something that when you learn it, and I learned it, and we've understood it, then it becomes a blueprint by which we should act on. So that's why it's called mathala. So it's something that I am exposed to. And I learn, but the intent is to employ it in my life. Just like an actor employs a script, here we're employing the commands and guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kalima tayyiba. Allah says that He sets forth a nice example to be followed. And that is kalima tayyiba, a good word. Kashajaratin tayyiba, which is like a healthy, robust tree. Asluha thabitun wa far'uha fi sama. Its foundations are firm, its roots are firm, and its branches are infinite and they shoot into the heavens. Some of the early commentators of the Quran took this verse to help us frame how we see faith and our potential. That is, for example, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma said, Kalima tayyiba la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That the good word is the word of faith. Kashajaratin tayyiba is like this tree. And he said, the tree is the believer. Asluha thabit, the knowledge of the believer. And the emotional, psychological state of the believer are like the roots of the tree. So the chest and the intellect are in concert based on that good word. I'm rooting myself intellectually and spiritually in La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. So that implies learning. Believers should constantly be in a state of learning. One of the unfortunate post-colonial hangovers that still impacts our community is that religious learning is just for children. But children don't lead the world. So we'll send the awlad to learn and we'll stay home and chill. Whereas, mashallah, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, he memorized the Quran when he was 36. Once I was in, uh, when I lived in Egypt, I came to California. There was this old uh, uncle, mashallah, Chacha Saab. And he came to me. And he said to me, you know, Suhaib Beta, I know I'm, I'm 86 years old. But do you think I can go to Ezhar now? I was like, subhanAllah, like, what are you saying? He's like, yeah, like, I have a passion to learn deen. I was like, mashallah, go for it. So he went to Egypt, alhamdulillah, he learned Arabic. He was 86 years old. So this idea that like knowledge, and religious knowledge is regulated to children and not something that we're responsible for. Allah says, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ لَلَّهِ You have to know. قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتُوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Are those who know and those who don't the same. وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُ مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ If we had only learned, we wouldn't be in hell. So knowledge is crucial. Musa said, like, I would ask Allah's protection from being ignorant. Then, allowing that knowledge to 
settle in my chest. Rusukh means something that's dug deep, so it digs into myself. That takes time. Knowledge takes time and experience. Hikmah comes with nuance. So my asl is thabit. And after that, I'm able to calibrate this faith. And unfortunately, our community, at times, religious leadership tries to look at this from a very myopic vantage point. The ideal Muslim. Like there's a book, I saw it. The ideal Muslim. I read it, I was like, man, I pray five times a day. I'm all right on that. Okay, that one, I need some work. I'm good on that one. But I don't feel like the idea, like this isn't me, man. This is the author. We tend to project and live vicariously through other people. That's a side of selfishness and religious immaturity. But when Allah says, فَرْعُهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ The branches that come from this tree, Ibn Abbas said, أَعْمَالُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ These are the different ways that the believers are going to calibrate their faith. Whether it's through being a lawyer, whether it's being involved in finance, whether it's through the arts, whether it's through music, whether it's whatever, fashion, an influencer, whether it's an imam or a sheikh or a student, whether it's an activist, all of our branches are different. But the root of those branches is the same. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's why Sidi Ahmad Zuruqi said, Ikhtilaf al masarik la yajlibu ikhtilaf al maqsad. Just because we come maybe from different perspectives doesn't mean that our objective وَأَنَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ الْمُنْتَهَىٰ Our end is Allah. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ is able to build a robust community because he's able to appreciate people's talents and allow them to contribute in ways that are meaningful to them. So I would never want anyone in this room to be bullied or intimidated in the name of religion from achieving the best you, if it's for Allah. The last is the next verse says, تُؤْتِي أُكْلَهَا تُقِرَاهَا أُكُرُهَا أُكْلَهَا كُلَّ حِينٍ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهَا That this tree is always giving fruit, man. 24-7, 365. And that implies that we have to go through tests and trials, different seasons. No one can follow the Prophet without being tested. And as the Prophet said, no one can love Allah without being tested. So that means this tree has to go through different stages and places, but still, maybe sometimes the fruit isn't abundant. Maybe sometimes it's not really ripe. Maybe sometimes it's, you know, needs a little work. It's not as organic as it should be. It's mixed with some sin. And that's why the Prophet said that the example of the believer is like a date tree. Ibn Hajr said, because the date tree gives dates all the time. And that every part of the date tree can be used. Its bark is for our roofs, its leaves were for the sajada, and we eat its tamar. Whether it's balah or ratib, whether it's not ripe or ripe, you'll find people like that kind of date. So he said, well, haka al mu'min. That's the believer. That wherever they are, they're able to bring some fruit to the situation, mashallah. But those seasons are a little different than winter, spring, summer, and fall. Prophetic seasons means to struggle with your family like Adam, to be ridiculed like Nuh, to be lonely like Yusuf. That's where prophecy lies. To be lied about like Sayyida Maryam, to be opposed and speak to power like Sayyidina Musa. If we just go forward. That's where prophecy lies. To be rejected like Sayyidina Isa. To be thrown out like Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salam. Those are the seasons of prophecy. They're not easy. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us strong. And when we know that those seasons are just temporary, they are part of Allah's creation, they're like salt on the qada of our life. The meat of the qada is Allah. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Sayyidina Musa, إِنَّ الرَّضَائِ فِي رِضَائِقْ بِقَضَائِ If you want to know if I'm happy with you, ask me if you're happy with me. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and يُجَدِّدْ لَنَا إِمَانَنَا كَمَنَ أَسْأَلُهُ وَنْ يُحَبِّبْ لَنَا كِتَابَهُ وَسُنَّةَ رَسُولِهِ 
صلى الله عليه وسلم أقول قول هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد رحمة للعالمين وإمام السالكين وعلى آله الأطهار وأصحابه الأبرار الحمد لله لا أبغي به بدلا حمدا يبلغ مرضوانه الأمل ثم الصلاة على خير الورى وعلى ساداتنا آله وصحبه الفضلة This is Black History Month 50% or 60% of the American Muslim community are people who identify with an African origin. Every single American Muslim rests on the shoulders of the death and martyrdom of Malcolm. So it behooves us during this month to take some time with our wife, with our husbands, with our children, and reflect and study on the great historical figures that I have blessed the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Africa and from the black American Muslim community. If you have an opportunity, maybe you can go visit the grave of Malcolm up in the Bronx. Maybe you can visit Masjid al-Taqwa in Brooklyn, State Street Masjid founded in 1939, MIB in Harlem, some of the older communities, the beautiful East African community now which lines the boroughs of New York City. But let's just talk about some of the major players who impacted our Islam right now, who came from Africa, mashallah. The first is the first martyr of Islam, who was a woman, a woman of color, Sumayya bint al-Khayat. Sumayya bint al-Khayat was from Africa. She's the, white, the mother of Ammar ibn Yasser. She was murdered by Abu Jahl. She is a woman who our historians say was Ifriqiyya. She was from Africa. Her son, Ammar, of course, also. Then by default, also a great companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was of African origin. Um Ayman al-Barakat, one of the best friends of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the mother of Usam ibn Zayd, who married Zayd ibn Haritha, who the Prophet visited her so much that even after his death, Abu Bakr and Umar, Sayyidina Ali and others would continue to visit her out of ihtiram to the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, and because of her great maqam. She's the woman who when they came to her, they said, why are you sad? Don't you know that what Allah has given the Messenger is better? She said, I'm not crying because the Messenger has passed away. I'm crying because the Qur'an has stopped. Throughout our history, Dhulnun al-Masri, one of the founders of Tasawwuf, he was from Nubia. He died in 859 al-Hijri. Regardless of your orientation, Muhammad ibn Ali, al-Jawadi al-Husayni, the ninth Imam in the Shia tradition. His mother Sabika was from Nubia. He was a black man. Throughout our history, Abu Aswad al-Duali, he wasn't black, but his original name was Zalim ibn Amir. He said, man, what kind of name is Zalim? Because the word black in Arabic means master, Sayyid, Sauda, Aswad. So he said, I'm going to change my name to Abu Aswad, because Aswad is beautiful. A very different type of understanding of what it means to be a mature member of the community of the Prophet ﷺ. And we should do this with, mashallah, all of our cultures and all of our people. Because we are a beautiful ummah. But if we don't know about each other, we can't honestly say that we're beautiful. My own teacher, Abu, uh, Sheikh Abu Mustafa and D.I. from Senegal, who the night I converted, grabbed me and he said, are you going to be the stupid white boy convert? And I was like, what? He's like, I'll see you on Tuesday with a notebook. Alif, ba, ta, ta. And he made me study with kids. He said, you study with kids to be humble. Because you white Americans got some problems. <laughs> I didn't like, take it like critical race theory and destroy the Sheikh. I was like, yeah, okay, Sheikh. And he had me memorize Quran. And I asked him, how did you memorize the Qur'an in 14 qira'at? He said, alamatni ukhti, my sister ahfadatni. My sister from the Marabitun taught me. Abdul bin Yasin, the founder of the Marabitun movement in Morocco, is someone from Africa. Ibn Mundri, the, the greatest writer, the greatest dictionary in the Arabic language, Lisan al-Arab, 
He was from Nubia. The point I'm trying to make, mashallah, is that this shouldn't make anyone feel guilty. We should be inspired to learn our history. And we should be inspired to celebrate black history, not just for one month. Wal Asr. Allah doesn't say was shahr. But we acknowledge this month and we acknowledge the incredible contributions of African brothers and sisters to our deen and to our ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring true affinity to our hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us aware as people who are not of African origin in the Muslim community that sometimes we carry privilege. I say that as a white man in the Muslim community. How can we be aware of that privilege and make sure that we control that privilege and then leverage whatever we can to truly be allies to people by stepping out of the way and getting back. To ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yakshif lana dhulmana. Ask Allah to show us our own evil. كما نسأله سبحانه وتعالى أن يثبتنا على الحق. As we ask him to keep us strong on the truth, we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless our brothers and sisters in Africa, from Senegal, the Gambia, Mali, Mansa Musa, like Allahu Akbar. It should be like movies made about Mansa Musa. We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless our teachers and our Mashaykh and our brothers and sisters. We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless the people in Congo. In Sudan, you know Al-Jahid, the great philosopher, he was from Africa. He wrote a book called Mufakharat Sudan ala Sa'ir al-Buldan. <laughs> he wrote a book called The Virtues of Sudan compared to all other countries, like Sudan, Sudan is superior. And he used hadith, he didn't mean it in, as we understand now, racial constructions. He meant Mufakharat bi ni'milah, like to be proud because of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us qulub salim insha'Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us truly friends and, and brothers and sisters and allies and lovers of one another. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our brothers and sisters in Somalia, in Kenya. We ask Allah to bless our brothers and sisters in Egypt, in Tunisia, in the Maghrib, and all over, alhamdulillah, the world. We pray for Palestine, of course, our brothers and sisters in Syria. And we pray for New York City. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us on the right side of history. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيبُ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّكَ رَبِّ الْعِزَّةِ عَمَّا يَسِفُونَ وَالسَّلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَ